Oh, good morning or afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We'll give everybody another minute or so to hop in, and then we will jump into dynamic data capture, forms, and Salesforce experience pages. Alrighty, it looks looks like our attendees have made their way in, Joelle, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in. But once again, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Cami Clements. I'm the Product Marketing Specialist here at FormAssembly. Very excited to be on this webinar with you all today. Uh, today we're going to talk about Forms and Salesforce Experience Pages um, with Joelle. But just first, a couple of housekeeping items. I will keep this very short and sweet so we can get to the nitty gritty here. Um, but uh, for those of you who think I look or sound familiar, that's because you've probably seen me in the VIP group. VIP group is something we offer our customers for free. It's a really great place to build community and collaboration. We do shout outs for all of our webinars in there and usually carry on some conversations in there. Um, so if you're a Form Assembly customer and not yet in the VIP group, we'd love to have you. Um, our invitation is on our website and we'll be sure to share it with everyone uh, after the webinar. Uh, for our prospects, once you're a customer, we'd love to have you. Uh, we offer a lot of great, like I said, community and collaboration, conversation, all sorts of good things in there. Um, but again, Cami Clements, you've probably seen me in the VIP group and excited to be here. Um, additionally, for our webinar at the end, we do a live Q&A session. So for any questions that you have throughout the webinar, throughout the demo, go ahead and just drop them in that Q&A box and we will try to get to as many as we can once Joelle is done. Um, and this is recorded. It'll be recorded and sent out to all of our participants to the email address that you registered with uh, by the end of the week. So go ahead and keep an eye out for that. That way you can share it with any colleagues or form assembly friends. Um, also, we have a resources section. So Joelle will uh, mention a couple of pieces of knowledge that we went ahead and linked so that you could access them. Um, we'll give you some clarification for some of the things that we cover um, and I think that is all I have. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to our product trainer, Joelle. Hi, thank you, Cami. Yes, as she mentioned, my name is Joelle Swanson. I'm the product trainer here at FormAssembly. I've been with FormAssembly for a little over three years now, and I just love being able to get on these webinars, talk to our customers, help them learn even more about us and what they can do with FormAssembly. So it's just really a great chance to get to know all of our customers. Before we really dive into the webinar, I do kind of want to see how many of you are using Salesforce Experience Cloud? You can go ahead and click yes or no there in the poll and just let me know. Don't worry if you haven't used Salesforce Experience Cloud too much. Um, this is just a great time to join this webinar, see what all Form Assembly can do with Salesforce Experience Cloud. Personally, I've helped so many customers with getting their forms embedded in their Salesforce Experience Cloud pages and also have embedded several of my own forms in my own developer account that we'll kind of dive into today and see a little bit more of. Um, I think, okay, it looks like about 60 people have submitted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go on and let's see. Okay, so we've got the majority of people saying, yes, they have used Salesforce Experience Cloud, but we do have a good chunk of people who haven't used it. And like I said, don't worry, this is a great kind of like dip your toes into the Salesforce Experience Cloud and using Form Assembly within it. So it'll be a great opportunity to see what all you can do there. So first up, what all are we going to be talking about today? We're going to talk about how you can use Form Assembly within Salesforce Experience Cloud, that Salesforce Experience Cloud authentication you can enable on your forms, and then pre-filling with Salesforce Experience Cloud session parameters, which is kind of one of my favorite things to do with Salesforce Experience Cloud. Um, first up though, there might be some people that don't know what Salesforce Experience Cloud is in our audience today. So straight from Salesforce, Salesforce Experience Cloud lets you create 
branded digital experiences to share information and collaborate with people who are key to your business processes, such as customers, partners, or employees, whether you call it a portal, help forum, support community, or something else, an experienced cloud site is a great place to connect with the important folks in your life. Now, <laughs> that is a lot of information and a lot of things that the Salesforce Experience Cloud can be, but FormAssembly works really well with this because we have our own FormAssembly App Exchange app that you can use to embed forms directly into your Salesforce Experience Cloud pages. We also offer a couple other things with that FormAssembly App Exchange app. And it's a really great tool to use, not only in Experience Cloud, but across Salesforce. And I really like that the app allows you to just directly do it. You don't have to worry too much about embedding your forms. It does all that hard work for you. So let's talk a little bit about actually embedding your form in an Experience page. Give me just a second to share my screen. Hopefully I don't get logged out. Salesforce has been kind of picky today and has logged me out a few times. So there we go. Okay, now I'm on the correct page. So here I've got a Salesforce experience page that I've already created this entire site in my developer account. And it's ready for me to go ahead and embed pages across, embed forms across the various pages on this site. So just to kind of give you an idea as we're going through all the demos today, I'm going to pretend I am a FA event planner today. So this experience site is built for my events business and I'm using FormAssembly to collect all the data related to each event. I then give my customers a login to this experience site so that they can quickly see the details of their event and make updates as they need to. So to do this, um, let's go ahead and embed that first form. So you can kind of see this page. I've got this empty component where I would like to put my form. To do this, I'll just come over to the components and search for form assembly. And we can see that form assembly component right here. And I can just drag it to wherever I'd like this form to appear on this page. Drop it in. And we can see I can embed that form. That sad robot is just kind of like saying, hey, you don't have a form ID or anything in here. So we'll just grab that form ID from form assembly that I want to embed here. And that's just going to be an update events details form. So we'll paste that form ID in here. And once I paste it, we can see there's that form. I'll go ahead and publish the site. Do, 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 got it. And then now we can come and take a look as a logged in authenticated user to my experience page. We can see I'm logged in as Sarah Sands and we can see her information here. I can select the event I'd like to update and she can see her event details right here. Now my respondents aren't able to edit or change any of these event logs. So I can use my form assembly form to be able to allow them to update those records in a controlled environment. So let's see how that looks for my respondent. We'll update the center pieces. We'll say she needs 25, that'll go up to 1700. And there we go, just a simple update. But once you submit the form and refresh the page, we can see that update took place here in the event record. So Sarah can easily see and keep track of all of her event details with that form assembly form on this event page so that she can make sure everything is up to date with her event. So with this, I really like this because I can have this form assembly form be a controlled way for my respondents to edit that. I don't have them having full access to Salesforce or editing things that they don't need to. It's literally only this stuff that I set. So I really appreciate that kind of control I give my respondents and updating the records that they need to. So. Now that your respondents are able to access your forms and everything, how can you make sure that only they can access that form? Like if you have a public page on your experience page, how can you make sure that only respondents that you want to access your form can? 
And that's going to be through our Salesforce Experience Cloud authentication. So with Salesforce Experience Cloud authentication, this allows only authenticated Salesforce Experience Cloud users to access the forms that you've embedded in your sites. And it just adds that extra layer because then they can't access it at all through the form assembly link. It has to be accessed directly through that experience page. And um, let's take a look at how that looks when you embed it in your form or when you set it up in your form. So I'll again share my page. And this time, we're going to start out in form assembly. If I can, there we go. Here's the correct tab. <laughs> Bad thing about these webinars, I have so many tabs open all the time. But here in this form, I want to set up uh, authentication on this because this is an event invoice for my customers. It's going to have their information, all the details of their event, the total cost, everything. I want to make sure that this is only going to the people who need access to it. So here in Form Assembly is where we're going to start up that Salesforce Experience Cloud authentication. We'll go to the processing page. And under the allow responses from drop-down menu, we'll select the Salesforce Experience Cloud user and click configure. So it's already kind of all set up, but I all you'll need to do is paste in your portal login URL for your experience site. For mine, it's going to be events by FA and my the rest of the login. And then your Salesforce organization ID that your Salesforce Experience Cloud site is located on. So if you're unsure of how to get these two, um, and two details, don't worry. Our documentation walks you through the steps of how to find each of these in your Salesforce or Salesforce's help documentation can also walk you through. You would just search how to find Salesforce organization ID and Salesforce has some really good help documentation to direct you exactly where you need to find that. <clears throat> then once we have that all pasted in there, we're going to go ahead and click apply. Now, before we move on, there's one extra piece of information that I need from this page before my form is ready to go and get set for my respondents to um, submit the form. And that's going to be the secret token ID. So we're just going to copy that. And then to actually allow my respondents to submit the form, I have to embed this form with that form ID and secret component into my experience page. So we'll come back over here to another page, my event invoice page in my form assembly account. We can see I already have the form assembly component here along with the form ID. So I just need to paste in that secret ID. And here it says form token, form token, secret I token. They're both the same thing. So once this pasted in, you'll notice a difference between the other one, that the form still is not appearing in here. Um, that is to be expected behavior. It won't appear until you log in as an authenticated user. So let's log in as an authenticated user. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's publish that page and we got it. Sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. And I can come over here and I just clicked on that form link and we were directed to this login page for the experience page. So this will be what anyone sees who clicks on that form assembly link. They'll be automatic, automatically redirected to this page and asked to log in. So we'll just quickly log in as a user. And that's going to be, oh, it didn't save her. Okay, Essence at Acme or dot com, right? Let's see, email address. Yes, okay. And then we'll paste in her password, log in. And once it finishes loading there, we can see that event invoice with all of this information for Sarah. 
Now, I'll get a little bit into what's going on here because this is where those session parameters really come into and are really key in being able to do even more with your forms and make it even more user-friendly like what we're seeing here. But before I dive into that, I first want to kind of take a step back and say, this is all done through pre-filling related records. And before I pre-fill this, which is all custom objects and things that I have in my Salesforce, let's look at an option that uses some standard objects. So you guys can take this and use it however you need to going forward to pre-fill your related records. So here's an example of a form where I'm pre-filling the account name, the contacts, and all of their related cases for that account. So this account has two contacts, and each contact has a couple cases associated with them. And when we come here to my form, you can see there are just two um, repeatable options within repeatable options. So we can go to the connectors and see how exactly you can pre-fill those related records. So here in the pre-fill connector, the only parameter I'm going to be using, so that only thing in the pre-filled link, is going to be the account ID. Everything else is going to be pre-filled using information that I found in my pre-filled connector. I'm not going to be pulling in any other information into that pre-filled link. It's just going to be the account ID. So pull in that account ID. I can then pre-fill the account name and account number slash ID fields in my form. And here's where the beauty of it is. Uh, here I have a dependent lookup, that contact object. And here in the lookup, I've got that account ID field from my contact object. And I am looking up a lookup result instead of a parameter. And this lookup result is looking at this account ID that is pre-filled right up here. And what that'll do is pull in every single contact that has that account ID in that field. So I can pre-fill all of the related contacts to that account. Then when we come down here to this case object, you can see I've kind of done the same thing down here of this case object has that standard field of case contact ID on it that I am using as the lookup. And I'm equaling it to the lookup result above of that contact ID that I'm pre-filling into my form. And with this, I'm able to pre-fill any related records I have in my Salesforce into here. So I can use it for if I've got opportunities that I want to pre-fill based off of a sales team member ID, I can do that. Um, there's so many different ways that I can do this. If I just have the related fields in Salesforce, I can pull those into here. Or I can do even just the matching fields. I could have done based off of email, looking up all the cases that have that email as the, uh, the same as the contact. So there's really a variety of ways you can use these related records to pre-fill all the information that you need into your form. So now that we kind of know that, we can take a look back at our event invoice form and see what all is going on here. So let me come in here and we'll go to, oh, not processing the connectors page here, and we can open up this event invoice prefill connector. Oh, and this is the wrong event invoice. That's okay. I got a couple of them. This is going to be the session parameters that I'm going to be using. And I want to just kind of really show how, there we go how you can use those session parameters I kind of mentioned to really make it so friendly, so easier for your respondents to submit this form. And we're going to use those session parameters. Now, what are session parameters? Coming here to our documentation, these session parameters are those things that are available through the Salesforce Experience Cloud authentication that you can use to pull that information directly from Salesforce. So these are those Salesforce portal aliases that we are using. Those are those session parameters. So we can use any of these aliases in our pre-fill connector to pull that information from Salesforce, from that authentication with a 
Salesforce Experience Cloud Authentication into the Prefill Connector. So for today, I'm going to use the user ID of the portal user. And we'll just copy that alias. And when we come back here to my Prefill Connector, you can see that all I've done is look up the user object. I've done the user ID for the user and then put in as a formula that alias for the SF portal user ID. And what this will do is automatically, once that user logs in, it'll pull their user ID here into the prefill connector and get started with going through it and processing the prefill connector. I can prefill any information that I want to from that user record into the form. Here, I'm just gonna do that email and we can see how that email then works through. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily think the user and contact would be related, but that email is the same in the user and the contact. So I can use that email here in the related lookup for this contact to look up the email and find the contact object that I need to prefill into this form, prefill all that information. And then coming down here to the event log custom object that I've created, I have a contact ID field on this event log object, and I'm use, able to use that contact ID that is pre-filled in the previous step to find all of the related event log objects and pre-fill them into my form. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and just save that and just kind of take a quick look at that form again. So you can kind of see purely the way it expands on this form. So we're logged in as Sarah Sands. It automatically pulls in her information, all of the updated logs and everything into this form so she can review everything and just submit it. And with this, I'm able to set it up so that one, it's filling in the entire form. So all Sarah Sands has to do is come in here, say, okay, everything looks good, submit. I approve this invoice. And I really like using the prefill connector for something like this because it makes it so easy for my respondents to submit. They just come in here, make sure everything's right. If something's not right, they can go back to that update event log page and update an event. And with these session parameters, I also want to point out it doesn't require a prefilled link at all. You can use the same exact form link for all of your respondents across any email, anything, all they have to do is log into this experience page and it'll pull in their information based off their login. And you can have that custom experience without the need for individual form links for every respondent. And using those session parameters and prefill connector like this allows you to ensure the data your respondents submit is accurate, increase that completion rate and make your friends even more user friendly and just really heighten that user experience. And from using form assembly forms on Salesforce experience pages really just allows you to have that custom experience, that personalization, really getting those forms up in front of those customers that you need it to be and have it be in a very secure manner and controlled manner that you are displaying your Salesforce information to your respondents so that it makes it so you can have a streamlined and customized experience for your respondents each and every time. And that was a lot of information. And I know this one was probably a little bit more advanced than some of our previous um, webinars. So let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Joelle. That was Fantastic. Uh, we did have questions come flooding in. Uh, so it looks like we've got about 15 to 20 minutes to sit down and answer them, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to start with the first one we got from Joanna. Joanna asked, do you have some advice on how to support clients using Safari, which objects to cross platform cookies and disrupt their user experience? Um. Me. which objects to cross-platform yeah. cookies and disrupts their user experience. I probably need more coffee. <laughs> you are good. Okay. So I'm just looking at your question, Joanna. Um, 
<laughs> so that one, that is kind of more of like the browser experience. There's not very much that we can do to kind of change how the browser is set up. Safari browser is just, that is how it is made. Nothing from Assembly or Salesforce can, will ever do, will be able to change just how Safari is done. Do handles that cross site cookie exchange and everything. Um, the most that I usually recommend is maybe encouraging your respondents to use Google Chrome. That is a little bit more friend friendly when it comes to those cross cookie sites. Um, or just to like clear their cookies or allow that cookie cross um, going between Form Assembly and Salesforce. Um, unfortunately, Salesforce and Form Assembly doesn't have any control over Safari. So <laughs> it's not much we can do, unfortunately. Um, so Caleb asked, and we did receive uh, a few questions, but um, on workflow, but Caleb asked, can you embed workflows? So at the moment, um, how you would embed workflows is you would actually, you wouldn't be able to use the component. I know our product team is actually working to try to make it so that you can use the component. Um, so hopefully we'll have that soon. But currently what you would do to embed workflows in your experience page is actually use one of the rich text components. You would drag that rich text into where you would like it to be on your experience page. And then you would use the quick publish publishing code from your workflow and embed it in that rich text component that you have on your experience page. And it will put the workflow there. It would be the first form of the workflow. And then once your respondents move on, they would be redirected to the next form of the workflow. So they would be redirected out of the experience page insight, but it's kind of that way that you can still have that start of the experience easily available for your respondents. Awesome. Um, so let's see, Jean S asks, are you, how are you capturing the contact ID on the form? The contact ID, I'm actually using the prefill connector to prefill the contact ID. Um, if you're talking about like the session parameter, that is actually um, pulled directly from Salesforce as soon as that respondent logs in. So then that just does automatically. You don't have to do anything. You just have to input the alias into your prefill connector and the login process does it automatically for you. And you just set up the prefill connector to prefill all the information you want from Salesforce into your form. That's really the joy of the prefill connector. Any information you have available to yourself in Salesforce, you can prefill into the form using that Salesforce prefill connector. Awesome. So Sarah asked, can you enable save and resume on forms that are embedded in your experience cloud site? Yes, definitely. I really like um, the save and resume feature on the experience site because what it will actually do is you can enable it to immediately start from the saved point in your form using the experience site. And so what your respondents would see is they would save that form, log out of the experience page, and then when they log back into the experience page to resume the form, it automatically starts them off at that last save point. They don't have to go in and click resume response and then enter in a password or anything. The experience page remembers exactly where they were when they saved the response and resumes that automatically. Awesome. Uh, I'm just going to keep rolling because I think we have about 25 more. But Mira asked, does MFA work with the authentication? Um, so that would depend on how you have your Salesforce set, your Salesforce um, experience, users, slot app, and everything. If you have MFA set up for your experience cloud users, then it would do that. So basically all the experience Salesforce experience cloud authentication does is it just connects to Salesforce and uses your Salesforce method of logging in to log into the form. So if you have it set up in your Salesforce experience cloud to so use MFA, it would use the MFA to log into the experience cloud site. So however you've got it set up in Salesforce is how the form assembly form would go through. Um, Joelle, we did get a couple of questions just on clarification as like Salesforce licenses needed and form assembly plans needed and all of that good stuff. So just to kind of combine a few, uh, Joe asks, is this only available on certain plans? Um, and just to kind of follow that up, Nadia asks, will users need a Salesforce license to access and update the information in form assembly? So trying to kind of roll those together, but just a little bit of clarification on what's needed to yeah. use these features. 
for sure. So the Salesforce experience, um, authentic experience cloud authentication. Um, sorry, we literally just updated it yesterday. So <laughs> trying to always remember to use the full name. Um, the Salesforce experience cloud authentication is only available on teams and above plans, but the form assembly component is available to any plan. So any plan level, whether it's basic through government can embed their forms um, in their experience page. They just would not be able to have the experience cloud authentication if they are like essentials or basics. That is for teams, enterprise, and government that have access to uh, respondent authentication methods. Um, and then as far as having a license for your form assembly users to edit Salesforce information, part of the beauty of like what I showed today of Sarah Sands, she just has access to the experience page site. So um, I believe you do need to have Salesforce licenses for those to have the actual login, but you don't have to have the extra licenses for her to be able to actually edit Salesforce records and details and things. That is why Form Assembly Forms are so convenient because you can set up the form, have the Salesforce connectors running for you and the back end of the form and have your respondents just open up the form assembly form, submit it, and automatically update those Salesforce records without the need for them having a Salesforce license. It uses your license when you authenticate the connector to connect to Salesforce and update it as you have it set. So you, going through the form, they don't need the Salesforce license to update records. And that's why Sarah Sands was able to update the records in the example I used today. Perfect, that's super helpful. Um, we did have a few other folks ask if this was being recorded. So yes, it is being recorded from start to finish and we will be sending out that recording to the email address that you registered for the webinar with by the end of the week. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Joel, tossing a few back to you, Bill said, it looks like this uses iframes to embed the forms in Experience Cloud. Is that correct? If yes, does that pose any accessibility challenges? So, um... The way I did it, yes, I did the iframe method, um, but in the experience page on the component, there is actually an option to detoggle the iframe. The iframe is enabled by automatically whenever you add that component to your experience page, but you can easily just deselect it and have that form not in an iframe on your experience cloud page and you can view it just however you need it to, you can do that. Awesome. So um, Bill asked just to confirm users will not have to re-authenticate to access these embedded forms, correct? Correct, yes. They would log into the site, and then as soon as they're logged into the site, they would go to that page, um, and then they'd be logged in, so they'd automatically see the form. Um, and it would just matter if they, they accessed the form assembly hosted link of the form. If they accessed it through that, like if I went to my form assembly page and I clicked the view of a form that has Salesforce experience cloud authentication enabled, I would be redirected to the Salesforce login page for that experience site and be forced to go through the login. So that's when your respondents would be forced to log in when they're accessing the form for the first time or the experience site for the first time. Uh, so another question, can we have multiple e-signatures to the form in the experience cloud page so that after one user signs off, it goes to the second user in the signing order to sign off? Um, so our forms don't allow for multiple signatures per response, but what you could easily do would be to have that first form. They sign off on the first form, then it as a second form, that is pre-filled saying that, hey, user one signed off on this and asking for user two to sign off. So it wouldn't be um, like, you wouldn't see like the actual physical signatures, like two of them on the response, but you can mark off and pre-fill like, hey, yes, this user has signed and then go through like that. Awesome, so we had a few more follow-up questions um, about the iframe. What would be the difference of keeping the iframe checked versus unchecked? So the difference is just kind of um, when the iframe is checked, um, you kind of saw it a little bit today where 
the form had the thank you page just kind of like embedded in that component that we put the form in and my experience page. Um, I had the branding kind of set so that it would match my experience page. So it just looked like, hey, it just said thank you where the form was. If I didn't have it matched, it would just have that like white square where the form was for the thank you page. Um, but if you didn't have it set for the iframe, for example, if I wanted to redirect to formassembly.com after a respondent has submitted the form instead of staying in that same page in the experience page, I could have unmarked the iframe and have that redirect link. And then it would have redirected the respondent after they submitted it to formassembly.com. They would have been redirected out of the experience page, or you can redirect it to a different experience page. Um, it just basically allows it to break out of that iframe. Um, if you want them to just still stay on that experience page, you can just use the iframe. You can even just keep it out of the iframe and just use the thank you page. There's a variety of ways that you could use both to accomplish your needs. Um, there's not really too much of a difference between the two. It's just what you need to do would signify which one you would like to use. You could even have it if you'd like to have like a little browser where it's redirected to formassembly.com, but you're still in the experience page. That would be kind of like the only difference with like the iframe versus not iframe is it would still keep that redirect link in like a little, basically what the iframe is like a mini browser in your browser page. So if you don't want them to stay in that mini browser page after they submitted the form, just deselect the iframe. Okay, so we had two more roll in um, and we'll get through these and then wrap up. Um, so second to last, I have a question about dynamic pick lists. Would I be able to use a record for my dynamic pick list to pre-fill text in my form? Oh yeah, for sure. I've definitely used dynamic pick lists. Um, I actually used a dynamic pick list in the example today. I can just quickly share my form, my screen real fast. Um, and the event log form here. This is a dynamic pick list right here. And in this dynamic pick list, I select the center pieces and I'm pre-filling all of these other fields with that information from this object. So you can easily pre-fill any information that you have from the record that you're looking up in your dynamic pick list into your form. Um, if it is just like a Salesforce dynamic pick list to a pick list field from Salesforce, Unfortunately, that's not going to work because the pick list field is just a single field in Salesforce. So you're just going to be pre-filling the one single field. But if you are using the basic lookup in the Salesforce dynamic pick list, then you can return multiple fields and pre-fill other fields in your form based off of the selection made in the dynamic pick list. Awesome. Okay. All right, Joelle, last one. Um, is it possible to embed a form in a Salesforce lightning page? Um, I'm assuming you mean like the um, Aura versus Lightning web component Lightning page um, for when you're using experience sites. Um, so at the moment, it is possible to embed using the Lightning web components version of experience sites, but we cannot use the Form Assembly app in those Lightning web component experience pages. The app is not suited for those because the Lightning web component pages are very much where you build your own apps. Um, so this framework doesn't kind of transfer over as well as the Aura version of the Salesforce experience pages. Um, so you would just use like that rich text component, like I'd mentioned for the workflow, you would just drag that rich text component into your Lightning Web component where you'd like the form to be, and then just embed the form or workflow, you either using the quick published code, iframe code, whichever publishing code method you would like to use, you would just use it as a more traditional version of publishing a form rather than the Aura version of experience paid cloud sites and pages that uses our form assembly component. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our Q&A session. Joelle, thank you so much for taking all those questions. We had so, so many come in. So thank you all for your incredibly well thought out questions um, and all of the wonderful insights there. Um, lastly, just to kind of wrap us up, we do have a few resources to share. Uh, so there is a resource center 
Um, if you're looking at your screen, it should be over there on your right. We have a couple of articles just explaining what exactly is Experience Cloud um, and Salesforce Experience Communities Authentication. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, or we weren't able to get to yours today, um, can definitely reach out to um, your CSM or someone at Form Assembly. We'd be happy to help you. But thank you all again so much for joining us today. Let me flip us over to the resources tab just in case anyone wants to see. Um, thank you all for joining us. And like I said, this will be recorded. So we will get that recording out to everyone by the end of the week. So thank you, Joelle, for your time and expertise here. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.